is a new Nigeria with Wale Oluwade. This is your current affairs program where we critically examine the strategic issues bedeviling Nigeria's developmental aspirations and boldly offer practical suggestions on building the Nigeria of our collective desires. Today's episode promises to be engaging and exciting. So get ready as we begin in earnest. And now let's get on with it. Today we're looking at petroleum subsidy removal and its implications. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu announced in passing at his inaugural speech that fuel subsidy is gone. Since then, pandemonium broke out as it were. The Nigerian Labour Congress and the Trade Union Congress have threatened mass protest and strike actions. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Limited has since released a new template for PMS pricing across Nigeria. Expectedly, prices of transportation and other goods and commodities have taken a massive spike upwards. What are the critical issues around this very contentious situation? How do we navigate the situation and ensure a win-win um, position for all? These are some of the issues we're examining today. We'll take this short break, and when I return, we'll get right into our conversation. Please stay with us. Professor mm. Uche Uwaleke is a professor of uh, capital markets, a renowned professor of capital markets in Nigeria at, at the Nasara State University. And also, he was a former commissioner for finance at, uh, in, at in, in Imo State. And so many other um, accolades is garnered over the years talking about um, the economy and all of that. So, Prof, once again, nice to have you. Thank you. Um, le let's sink our teeth into this um, situation now. You know, a cacophony of voices have rent the hair since um, President Bola Metunubu made that um, comment, just in passing, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's why mm -hmm. we say the president's voice carries oh, yes. enormous, you know, weight. Yes. I in all of this, bro, haha, what's your view? Yeah, uh, well, once again, thank you for inviting me to your wonderful program in New Nigeria. Um, also, permit me to seize this opportunity because this is my first time of. Um, appearing on an AIT show since the demise of um, mm. that uh, great man, mm. uh, Chief Do Raymond Dobbesi. Mm. I had to extend my condolences to the family and uh, to the management and staff of that mm. communications. Uh, we are praying uh, God to um, give him eternal rest. He, he was indeed, uh, you know, a great Nigerian, yeah. one that desired a new Nigeria. Absolutely. New Nigeria. Um, <coughs> to what you said, of course that should be expected cacophony of voices, you know, to use your, uh, to borrow your, 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 your words. This is one issue that has been with us over a very long period of mm. time. Um, what the president actually said uh, during the uh, in inaugural speech was, he was stating the, you know, uh, obvious, what was already in the uh, budget. Um, the budget didn't make any provision for fuel subsidy from July to December. Uh, between January and June, we made a provision of, uh, I think, 3.36 trillion, mm -hmm. and that would be it. So the president merely, uh, you know, voiced it out. But um, on that score, um, you know, I, I would also say, just as you rightly noted, that the president, um, any statement from the president carries, you know, enormous weight. Mm. So probably the, the president, um, uh, you know, in my view, mm. um, uh, you, you know, couldn't have said it the way Yep. You know, he did, saying subsidy, um, he, you know, is gone mm. um, in the month of May, mm. when in the budget we even had up till uh, June to, uh, to be able to do that. And that, you know, created a uh, lot of ripple effects. Mm. Okay, we saw how the everybody, you know, re markets reacted, mm. um, queues and, and all that. Mm. So he was stating the obvious, as I said earlier on. And if you come to think of it, what is my take? What is my position? Mm -hmm. My position is in support of um, uh, the removal, uh, but in um, a more tactical way. Mm. O okay, why do I say I support the removal of first subsidy? Um, I recall while I was um, a member of FAC, uh, the Federation Account Allocation Committee, yeah. in my capacity then as uh, the commissioner, uh, commissioner one of the issues that always came to the fore each time we had our meeting had to do with what NNPC was bringing, you know, to the pool. To the pool. Yes. Um, anytime 
um, NMPC made its uh, report, you would find that um, um, so much would have been deducted, mm. you know, by way of um, under recovery, mm. which of course is this um, subsidy. subsidy. So by the time they make their deductions, under recoveries, um, reductions um, in respect of pipeline vandalism and all that, mm. very little now, you know, comes in. It's available for sharing. Available for sharing. So um, I know that if this subsidy is effectively removed, mm. um, the federating units, or the federal subnationals, you know, at least will have um, some breather in terms of um, revenue. Prof, for me, actually, the point is, I mean, that's why I said if any reasonable Nigerian would, would question why we should remove subsidy, because there was even no money to pay subsidy. Absolutely. There has been no money to pay subsidy. There has been no money. So, so we were borrowing money oh, yes. to pay subsidy. To pay subsidy. That's, that's uh, sheer madness. Sheer insanity. Uh, insanity. We're borrowing money to pay subsidy. Oh, yes. And then we mm -hmm. have critical issues. Issues. That demanded for attention. Exactly. They were left unattended, unattended to. to. Now, that brings me to this point. You know, Prof, you know, you and I have been around for a long time. Oh, yes. You we were together, you know, on the TV channel, oh, yes. the National Network, yes. talking about our refineries and all of that. You remember? <laughs> yes. You I, channels, you know, I think. Channels, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, two years ago, yeah. Prof, one of the major reasons why we're, the whole issue of whether it's, you call it under recovery or subsidy, whatever, yeah. is because refineries are not working. Oh, yes. Prof, can yeah. you explain to anybody why our refineries are not working? Please. Well, it's also um, very sad. We have four refineries um, in, in this country with a capacity of 425,000. That can meet local yes, consumption. at least lo local consumption. Local consumption. Unfortunately, um, uh, you know, they are down. You know, virtually all of them are, are down. And that is why we are importing. We're importing over uh, from, um, you know, some esti we estimates. Our crude. We export the crude. Yes. And then we import finished uh, crude. Yes, and Nigeria is the only African country, only, in fact, oil producing only country co that, that does oil that. Only oil producing nation yes. that is doing that. Yes, and that's also why we uh, have not been benefiting. Uh, we, you know, we didn't seem to benefit even from the, wait, from the um, fallout of the Russian-Ukraine war. Ukraine war. So even when oil prices are rising, when we are supposed to be smiling to the bank, <laughs> it's the reverse, <laughs> you know. Sorry, uh, Prof, this so morning, yes. one of the newspapers during the newspaper review, 11.3 yes. Trillion naira was spent in the last three years alone. Yes. On turnaround maintenance. On turnaround maintenance. Can you speak to that, Prof? Um, again, that that speaks to the level of um, uh, you know uh, corruption that we also have in the, in the country, and um, I also saw um, you know a publication that um, um, attempted to um, you know identify yes. various years. Okay where or when this um turnaround maintenance were uh, meant to have been completed exactly you know the timeline so deliverables uh, uh, deliverables we've passed we've went, yes. we're gone and you're still back to um you know uh, square one square one and you know i was telling you about the uh, uh, accounts of um nmpc yes. you, you look at those accounts these refineries are not working, and yet you find that um, salaries, uh, what do you call personal it? Costs. Personal costs are still ban 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 and benefits. You want those benefits? Yes, they are still you know carrying those things, and these are the things that are actually you know burrowing, you know, into the um, um, treasury. Yes, you know, of of, of the Nigeria. of Nigeria. Uh, so a lot of leakages uh, are, are going. We we can't explain it, you know, turnaround maintenance and, and all that, and um, not to. Um, um, you know, long ago, I think the latest was um, they were talking about, um, a, you know, not just turnaround maintenance, yes. but, um, you know, a complete um, overhaul. And they said they were going to give the contract to, um, you know, a company in, in Italy. They did, actually. They did. One, um, okay. one Italian company. One Italian company. Portaco, they did. 1.02 billion. billion dollars. Exactly. And they paid. So, yes, uh, yes, um, yes, to the best of my knowledge, I think something was... Um, no, they paid. Uh, Prof, uh, they paid. Uh, uh, but same. nothing has been delivered. No. Uh, but we're here. Let's believe that it will happen. Uh, before the end of the year, at least... The, the that's before the end of the year has been yes. going on since 2020, <laughs> when the first, thing was, <laughs> the first contract was signed. Oh, uh, yeah. So uh, that's why I think... And that's why I am of the opinion that as far as these um, uh, refineries are concerned, you know, uh, you know, it's something we should actually leave to the, you know, the private sector to handle. Uh, it's not as if government will take washes and off Absolutely. it completely, but Absolutely. you um, privatize it in a way that you still have majority control. Um, if you have take the equine, um, for example, mm. 
the oil company mm. of um, Norway mm. that used to be Start Oil. Mm. Mm. Okay, government still has I think six, six something percent mm. interest in that place, mm. but some of it is in the hands of the private mm. sector. You have uh, it, the that of Italy, the Eni. Yes. Uh, you have um, um, Petrobras yeah. in in Brazil. Yeah. Even in, in um, Saudi Arabia, mm. the Aramco, Saudi mm. Aramco, mm. Saudi Aramco today is listed on the Tadawul. I agree with you with all those experiences, but you know because of our peculiar situation, you know, as a, as government. Our government, successive governments over the mm -hmm. since independence, have not really demonstrated um, the discipline, yes. both administrative, fiscal discipline, managerial discipline, to manage anything. If you, I don't think you and I can mention any single business that Nigeria has managed successfully. Nigeria Airways, NEPA, that's National Electric Power so Authority. This is simply a Nigeria, case. Are you, you're you're, the make, list you're goes making on. a case for privatization. So, so yes. if I agree with you on privatization. Partial privatization. Part privatization. Yes, I but I, yeah. where yeah. I slightly disagree, yes. uh, Prof, is that Nigeria should not retain control because we will still keep going around in circles. And mm. the example I want to share is, and you and I have had this discussion several mm. is the NLNG. Nigeria National um, Nigeria's control. Natural liquefied yes, gas. Nigeria has company. forty nine percent. Forty nine percent. Yes, but that's, now, that's, that's company that's, you don't hear stories oh, yes, they deliver that's the only company that Nigeria they, owns pay, that is paying dividends. Dividend, yes. In the last since inception in nineteen ninety three yes. or so, mm -hmm. they've they've de delivered mm -hmm. almost fifty billion US dollars both in dividends, yes. in taxes, yes. in royalties, and yes. all of that. Yes. I think that's a model that works, yes. that we should follow. Uh, when I say, when I say uh, the refineries, uh, I'm also referring to, to the, uh, the, the, owns the, refineries the, parent, anyway. the parent company, yes. you know, the uh, holding company, mm -hmm. uh, as it were. Give the president, you know, three or four recommendations on how to resolve the pains. Oh, yes. You and I know Nigerians are going through excruciating, excruciating pains, pains because of this policy. You can say that. We yeah. agree on the mm -hmm. policy, mm -hmm. but how do you ameliorate the pains that Nigerians are going through? Yes, so we'll take this short break, pre Prof, the way we'll come back. Okay. We'll take this short break, and when we return, we'll continue with our conversation. Please stay with us. <music> Welcome back. Prof, before we went on that short break, mm -hmm. um, you, you were explaining the, biz the, the appropriate business model huh? on this, you know, uh, dismantling this institution, this corrupt institution called NMPC uh -huh. that has not profited Nigeria uh -huh. in any way, you know. And um, I, I, I totally agree with you. And I'm sure, like I said earlier when we started, any reasonable Nigeria, Nigerian who is not sentimental or, or benefiting from this current exactly. system exactly. would agree that we can't yes. continue we can't continue like as this. business as usual, the business way this country usual. has been managed. Yes. This manages this country has been managed criminally. Yes. And it's almost I don't know why this country has even survived mm. up to now. But prof, in addition to you finishing on that thought, you would I need you to give us three or four recommendations, you know, speak to the president. I'm sure he's listening. His, his handlers or advisors will be listening. Let's have three or four recommendations how to ameliorate the pains Nigerians are going through. Please. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I think the, one of the first things I would advise the president to do is to get um, a very competent person to run that ministry. He should the president be should not be yes. so the should de minister. He should depart from that mm. tradition. That tradition. Yes, the president is too busy. He has a lot on his hands. Absolutely. Hand. There's somebody that is... Um, that will be on it Absolutely. on a daily basis, you know, should be given that responsibility and the person that reports to him. Exactly. So that is um, uh, one recommendation. Um, the other one also has to do with, um, you know, how to go about it. Again, I don't support this um, idea of a sudden debt approach, <laughs> you know, removing subsidy, removing it in one, one, fell, one, fell swoop. one fell swoop. Okay. So I think what needs to be done now is uh, for the, pre the uh, government to continue its engagement with mm. uh, stakeholders mm. and possibly constitute or set up um, a team mm. that will even audit you know the uh, the, the, the system the downstream uh, exactly. you know what's happening because right now we don't even know how, how much, much we are, are we consuming, consuming daily yes. what, what is so when we food? say cost subsidy is um, 3 trillion mm. 6 6 trillion mm. on what is the basis for that what, what are the underlying factors uh, exactly numbers what are the numbers numbers so whatever solution we are bringing should be evidence based okay um, and that also brings me to this suggestion my advice to the president in matters like this mr president 
don't listen to one side. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Uh, try to have a balance. Mm. When you have a team, mm. an economic team in which everybody's, um, you, you know, there's unanimity of opinion. People, everybody's that sleeping means, and facing the right, the yes, same direction. That's, 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 that's not that's a, a good that's economic that's team. That's exactly. So you should welcome diverging views, we'll and at the end of the day, superior argument or we'll something we'll based on, on evidence, exactly. you know, should be pursued. Okay. So what do I think, you know, sh should happen? I think there should be a balancing act. Mm. The president in his speech has said he doesn't intend to rule over Nigerians. Mm. Say he intends to govern. govern. I want to govern on your behalf. Mm. He said the right things, mm. you know, uh, on, on that day. Mm. Um, and part of what, you know, governing on our behalf mm. should mean listening Absolutely. to Nigerians. Absolutely. You have rightly said it. Nigerians are going through excruciating Things. hardship. We are still reeling from the effect of the, you know, currency, you know, redesign. Super change and all of we that. Are still reeling from that. Mm. that effect. Not not, a lot of Nigerians have not recovered. And then this one, comes this, this one coming in. And you also um, notice, this is not the only reform that is on the table. Mm. The president is also talking about, and I support that, unification of exchange rates. By the time you unify exchange mm. rates, you now devalue the Naira, mm. for example. Mm. And on the, this other side, too, you're having this um, pressure. Uh, <laughs> pressure. You know? It will be catastrophic you. For, the, you. You know, for the ordinary Nigerian. So you. I think reforms should be uh, well planned. Mm. Reforms should be um, sequenced. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and for this particular one, in terms of balancing the act, mm. what I think should the president should do is to, there are two uh, options. One, explore again the option of, you know, phasing it. Phased approach. Yes, phased approach. I'm not saying you, it has to, uh, you know, Drag be, on be forever. No, no, no. It can be over a short period, exactly. a, few, a few months period. Exactly. You know, uh, phase it. So Nigerians can even prepare, prepare for, it. for it. We prepare for yes. it. So phase it. Now, the arguments uh, against phasing I've had is that when you phase, if you phase, people will um, um, hoard. Mm. You know, I don't think that's, that's, uh, that argument uh, you know, holds, holds water, water you know, in this um, instance. The other option I think should, should be explored is what I wrote uh, in an article that was published in Bus Business Day uh, you know, some time ago. I wrote an article on this same um, issue, wow. and Business Day published it. And in that article, I was advising that the government can also look at what you know, has happened in other, uh, you in know, countries, environment. environments that also face the same mm. similar situation. I cited the case of um, at Malaysia, uh, Egypt, mm. and, and um, at some point to Libya. Mm. What did they do? Okay, what they did was to um, devise this thing, uh, what they call a smart card system. Mm. Now, commercial vehicle owners, um, um, hospitals, educational institutions, mm. okay, that the, of the, course the institutions they go that yes. benefit the poor directly. And that, yes, they go and register mm. for this um, uh, smart card Cards. and get the smart card. So when they go to um, NMPC Fill stations. filling stations, they swipe, you know, swipe the cards yeah. and then buy limited quantity exactly. of the fuel, are regulated At prices. prices. Exactly. So as different from the bourgeois, like yes, you, you like you're like you're like uh, uh, Wale. No, no, I'm not <laughs> you, <laughs> Wale. So Prof, Wale can round go up to please in 30 seconds oh, because oh, we, need, uh, we need to go. Just round oh, up in 30 oh, seconds. Oh, yeah, so that, that's my suggestion. Mm. The, let the government should consider this uh, smart card um, initiative. Very brilliant one. Yes. Very um, brilliant one. I, I'm sure it will go a long way, you know, in ameliorating you know, the situation. Mm. And, um, uh, and then who bears the cost exactly. in the interim? Exactly. I think in the interim, the central bank can be at the cost. Because cost. for me, it is better to welcome creeping inflation exactly. arising from ways and means, mm -hmm. you know, than galloping inflation that will happen Absolutely. once this uh, um, thing is, you know, yanked off I, I, all I, in one I agree with you entirely. Yes. Brilliant, Prof. Mm. Brilliant as always. Prof, this is a continuing oh, conversation. Oh, oh, this yes. is just starting, you know. Mm. This is a new administration. Yes. You and I haven't even talked about setting an agenda for yes. Mr. President, yes. giving in portfolios and all we'll do all of that. Yes, so yes. Uh, well, I'm sure we'll be having more sessions mm. on the economic front mm -hmm. for this administration as, as time goes on. Thank you. Prof, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Too, I'll Wale. see you next time. Thank you. Now, that's the end of the interview segment. We'll take this short break and then when I return, I'll give my closing statements. Please stay with us. Welcome back. And here's my closing statements. Today, I would have a slight departure from the norm. Uh, my closing statement is a tribute to the passing of High Chief Raymond Alejo Anthony Dokwesi. Like most people, I got to know 
of High Chief through his exploits in broadcasting as the pioneering founder of Real Power and later on AIT. In addition to uh, this are, of course, his many other businesses um, in several sectors, maritime, ICT, real estate, just to name you know, a, a few. Um, this, these businesses are providing thousands and thousands of employment opportunities to many families you know, across Nigeria. Now, for close to the two, two, two decades, I've been a regular guest at the AIT, Ray Power, you know, appearing on several, almost all the major uh, current affairs programs, you know. But I only got to meet High Chief personally on one-on-one -on -one, uh, basis early last year, around February or March. It was in the run-up um, to the presidential primaries of the PDP when he was the chairman of the technical committee and um, I was a member of one of the subcommittees. Of course, it, there, there's no point restating that. That committee's work eventually led to the emergence of um, Atiku Abaka as the PDP's um, presidential uh, candidate um, eventually. Now, one of the days um, we needed to make, uh, we had a meeting, you know, um, at his residence, in the, the boardroom, you know, at his residence. We had a meeting there. And um, the, the high chief had called uh, about five of us in the media team. I'm, I'm speaking now about uh, prior to the uh, primaries. So they called us for a meeting. He and his team, about nine of them, then five of us, so making about 14 or 15. So we're having a meeting. And, um, but I came prepared for that meeting with a presentation. You know, I love making uh, presentations. So as the meeting wore on, by this time it was getting to 12 midnight and all of that, I chief was looking at me. The projector was already set up, but I chief was looking at me and said, Wally, are you sure we can take this your presentation? I insisted, and I did make the presentation. Now, seven minutes into my presentation, High Chief stopped me, you know, and, um, and said, Wally, Nigerians need to hear these things you're saying. And that presentation was about the talking points for the 2023 campaign for AA, you know. So anyway, so he began making calls. He called the GMD. Obviously, he was sleeping. He called the MD. She was sleeping. Then he, he, he called other people, but eventually it was Lawrence Igono, you know, that picked the, the, the call, the head of programs, my very good friend, Lawrence Igono. And then he said, oh, Lawrence, uh, my friend, I have a new anchor for you, a very brilliant young man. You need to meet him. You guys should talk, work out modalities, give him um, one hour twice a week, you know, and please, you know, let it be a very, I'm sure this guy would do a good job. And that's the, that's the, 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 the story behind the birthing of my current affairs program uh, that you are watching now. A new Nigeria. That's how it started. And that says a lot about the person, the essence, and the measure of High Chief uh, Dr. Raymond Aleoho Anthony uh, Dokwesi. He didn't know me from anywhere. We just met in the course of uh, politics. You know, I'm not a politician, but we met there. I was providing um, um, technical support in terms of ad advisory on economic matters and all of that. That's how we met. He never asked me about where I was from, who my parents are, what tribe, and he gave me this platform to do what I'm doing now. Now, if I was to um, quantify in monetary terms this platform that has been given to me by this wonderful man, it's almost uh, over 500 million naira that I would have to pay, you know, in a year. Now, where do I have to get, where would I get that kind of money from? You know, so, um, do I mourn High Chief Raymond Dokwesi? I don't think so, because he, I, I think he was a fulfilled man. And I think he died empty, really. People have said that, and I want to lend my voice to support that. High Chief Raymond Aleo Dokwesi died empty. You know, um, what stands out about this man? He was an extraordinarily successful man. Beyond mere success in terms of business, he was a great man. Though I know in this part of the world we use the word greatness, you know, carelessly. High Chief, you know, ticked the boxes in terms of greatness. Greatness on two parameters. Number one, the lives you have impacted. Only God knows the number of people. High Chief has changed their lives. He was a builder of men. High Chief built and still, even in, in passing, he's still building, you know, men. Secondly, in terms of greatness, he was a man who has left a legacy that will live for decades, if not hundreds of years, you know, uh, after now. You know, so, and he was a nation builder. He was a nation builder. There is no way the history of democracy in Nigeria will be written without the name of Raymond Aleo Dokwesi featured prominently in that history. So, do I mourn High Chief again? I don't mourn him. He was successful. He was a tremendously successful man. 
and he lived a very good life. You know, I mean, talking about greatness, the, the great men of history, many of them didn't live as long as high chief lived. Jesus Christ died at 33, even though he rose up on the third day. And the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his soul, lived and died at 62 or 61. You know, and we're still talking about them today. And I'm not in any way comparing high chief to these two um, uh, prophets of God. Or, you know, but high chief was a successful man and he lived a rich and satisfactory you know, life. And I think all of us who knew him, you know, either directly or indirectly, we should be proud of what this man has done. If you come to the premises of AIT at Paduma Hills in Asokoro, where I'm speaking from right now, you'll be amazed at what came out from the mind of this man, the sheer scope and breadth of buildings, equipment, facilities that are here, speaks volumes about this man. The legacy he has left will continue to speak long after you know, he's been buried. So I want to celebrate the life of a titan, of a colossus. I rejoice with his family. I rejoice with all of us who knew him, who interacted with him. I think it was a blessing to have met him to have, to have interacted with him. And I pray the Almighty God, you know, grants his soul eternal repose. Whenever he sends me email, which exchange emails, he always says the initials, he puts his initials, Da, you know, if, which is written in reverse. So, for as long as Da communication lives, Raymond Alejo, Anthony Dopesi would live. That's my closing statement. Now, that's the end of the program today. Remember to follow me on my different social media um, handles. Subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can watch this particular video and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>